How's it going guys? This is Aster and today we're going to be reviewing my Season 5 UPA Draft. Drafted a pretty good team. We actually um, we streamed the entire draft on Little Bigness's, uh Drew's channel. I believe it was his channel and um, the draft didn't go 100% according to plan. It was kind of frustrating for everyone. Uh, a couple of uh, mishaps happened but everybody got their teams. It all worked out in the end. Uh, it, was, it was a really slow draft. I meant to get this video out yesterday, but that doesn't look like that's gonna happen, obviously. Uh, I'm recording this on Saturday evening, but I just wanted to go over uh, the picks and uh, why I got them, how I, how I planned my, my team out for this season. So, right away, right off the bat, before we even re reveal the first Pokemon that I picked, um, the, uh, the Pokemon I wanted to pick was Snipe from me right away. I was picking 8th, which wasn't bad because 8 out of 16 means that when it comes back around to you, you haven't missed that many picks. You've only missed, well, you, you have the equivalent amount on each side roughly. I think it's about 14 on one side and 16 on the other that you miss. But my first pick, I w I'm going to be honest, I was going for a sand team initially. I was going to pick up Excadrill and later on Tyranitar or Hippowdon, depending on what would happen in the draft. But Excadrill was one of the first 7 picks, so I missed out on that. But I had a backup plan, and the first Pokemon that we ended up picking was Weavile. We've got Weasley the Weavile right here, as you can see on your screen. This Pokemon is known to tear Draft League formats apart. It's good in OU. We all know that, it, that Weavile is a superb Mon in OU. It does one thing, and it does it very well. Knock off an Ice Shard. That's what it does. It just has one of the best priority moves in the game being an ice type priority move coming off of a base 120 attack it's 125 base speed allows it to outspeed 85 percent of any pokemon in the game barring scarfs of course so this thing is fantastic i've seen what it can do in action some of my favorite uh well i was even about to say gba but in general league players have owned this pokemon and it just did fantastic things and it's uh it, it's phenomenal and you can pack really dedicated coverage on it like low kick or poison jab for specific weeks and it's it's basically the the best revenge killer and i'm expecting to get at least 18 kills with this thing over the course of the season i think we have 10 or 12 weeks i'm not 100 percent sure but either way 18 kills is what i'm shooting for so this is our first pick and uh, I kind of went in the same vein of uh, a Pokemon that does really well uh, what, what it does really well, but it only does one thing for my next pick. But this pick was planned way in advance as well. Luckily, I didn't get sniped on this one and it came back around to me. It was a T or B pick and I decided to get it right away because I was afraid it would go as being one of the best fire types in the, uh, in the format. And that Pokemon is Entei. And you guys have seen me use Entei on the channel before twice actually i love this pokemon it's an amazing wall breaker when it's choice banded and if it's not choice banded then you're gonna have to deal with a heck of a set because this thing gets access to things like sunny day solar beam and i'll just go over its move set over here you guys will see it can get a you can run eruption uh to do a tremendous amount of damage you can run extra sensory to be able to hit uh i don't know uh stuff uh, fighting types that would resist fire I, I can't even think of one right now but this thing has great coverage overall uh it doesn't have to be run banded it's its best set of course with normally stone edge extreme speed which is amazing now i have two forms of priority between uh entei and weavile this thing is just awesome you bring it in after something goes down just like weavile uh, i can bring either or on a specific week or both or none of course but uh, either way, this thing comes in and just nukes something with Sacred Fire. The only things that switch into Sacred Fire comfortably are bulky fire types, and there aren't many of them in the game. Uh, and most of them get two hit KO'd by, or one hit KO'd by Bulldoze, which this thing also gets. So, or Stone Edge as well, if it's Rotom Heat or something like that. I don't think anybody actually picked up Rotom Heat. I could be wrong though. Um, in the in our league, but anyway, this thing is going to put in a tremendous amount of work. I'm also expecting quite a few kills from this. So uh, between Weavile and uh, and Entei, the team already has its office uh, offensive presence, has great speed tiers. I wanted a little more speed though, and as you can see, my first two picks 
are both stealth rock weak so I needed to patch that up as soon as possible and luckily apparently our league has a knack for not drafting the Lottie twins very early so I decided to pick up Latias uh, I'll just go over the uh, the nicknames really quickly here Weasley is of course a, a reference to Ron Weasley redhead uh, Geo is actually uh, gym leader Geo is the coach in the GBA of the San Francisco Giantes. This is his mascot. It's been on his team for the past two or three seasons. I can't, I'm not 100% sure. I know it's the past two at least, but that's why that's nicknamed that way. And this thing is, is named Clara. It's a play on word on uh, clearing, play on words on clearing. And it's uh, this thing's main role is to get rid of rocks. That's what it's there for. It's a very reliable defogger. But it serves a lot of other roles as well. First of all, having the same speed tier as Mega Diancy and Latios itself and a bunch of other uh, base 110 Pokemon, hitting that 350 speed tier means that it outspeeds a lot of walls and a lot of slower but powerful Pokemon, meaning that it can almost always get off a of defog unless the opposing Pokemon is Scarfed or uh, it's carrying some kind of really, really powerful coverage for it. So. Latias is really reliable in that way, but it can also hit very, very hard and gets access to a very wide move pool that will allow me to hit Pokemon for super effective damage and sometimes even quad effective damage. You can see here it gets Earthquake, which hits Heatran. We know that from OU. It gets Energy Ball. I can run a Calm Mind set. I can run Grass Knot to hit heavier Pokemon and Oko them like Rhydon, Rhyperior, things like that. I can run Surf on this thing. I can run a physical set with, I believe this thing gets Dragon Dance, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that might only be Latios, but uh, yeah, it might only be Latios, but it's still very good. And the other main reason I picked this thing up was because Pokemon like Weavile and, um, and Entei are very susceptible to getting weakened quite quickly. You want to come in and revenge something, there's a possibility that it has a priority move and it still takes off a good chunk of like 25 or 30% from either Weavile or, um, or Entei. And a Pokemon that I had planned from the beginning of the, of the draft before it even started. I'll show you guys later on what I mean. But Latias gets access to Healing Wish. And having a Healing Wish Latias means that I can heal up any Pokemon that I'm intending to sweep with that has taken a lot of damage over the course of the game and bring it right back up to full and turn it back into a threat. So this thing is phenomenal at doing what it does once again, but it can do so many things. And its stats are amazing. I don't have to run this thing Life Orb like you usually do in OU. I can run it specially defensive. I can run it physically offensive as it's not as good obviously, but you guys saw the kind of physical coverage this thing gets. Uh, it gets, uh, like we said before, Dragon Claw and Outrage, it gets Earthquake. This thing can do a lot, it gets Magic Code if I want to bounce back hazards before they even go up, uh, or Toxics or Thunder Waves or anything like that. This is a an amazing set, I can run ref uh, an amazing Pokemon, I can run Reflect, I can run Dual Screens if I wanted to, I'm pretty sure this thing gets... Uh, light screen as well yep there it is and basically this thing can do a lot for me and I can tailor it to exactly what I need every single week now moving to the next Pokemon this was a Pokemon that I honestly centralized my entire team around when planning to draft this team and it's a Pokemon that has known a lot of success in draft league format it's made it to two championships in the GBA and D League uh, and it's it's, it's, it's typing is phenomenal and it can also sweep it's normally a bulky Pokemon but it can be extremely offensive and it's another Pokemon that you guys have seen me use in lives one of my very first lives actually and that Pokemon is the blade the blade having the steel and ghost typing is incredible as it loses its weakness to fighting and its stab moves are so threatening steel plus Ghost, plus running Sacred Sword, is insane. This thing also gets access to Gyro Ball, and with its extremely slow speed, even without a Swords Dance up, it can do so much damage to faster Pokemon that think they can switch in on it and threaten it out immediately, that it's it's so valuable, It's it, it does pretty much everything. I don't even need to run an Eviolite if I don't want to. This thing has base 150 defense. It can take hits on the physical side for days. And the only Pokemon that really can hit it extremely hard with a fighting type move 
is Lopunny, as it has Scrappy. And there are a couple of other Pokemon like Kangaskhan and things like that, but mostly Lopunny. And I have a pretty good switch into Lopunny right here with uh, Latias as I can run physically defensive. And there's another Pokemon, once again, the same one that I was mentioning before that you guys will see later on. But basically, the Blade serves as a setup sweeper for me, which I didn't have yet. Uh, I want to be able to get up a Swords Dance and sweep a team. I can even run Destiny Bond on this thing if I want to deal with a threat that way. I can do a lot of things. This thing gets Rock Slide. This thing gets uh, Sleep Talk if I want to use it as Sleep Fodder against, like, let's say, an Amoongus or something like that. Uh, it gets sub, which is extremely threatening. If you let me get behind a sub, that, that could be a spell game over. It gets Pursuit. Obviously, Weavile is a little bit better of a Pursuit Trapper, but the Blade still does the job very well. And uh, yeah, this thing overall just gets a plethora of, uh, of good coverage moves, as well as another Pokemon that does what it does very well. Now, obviously, as you can see, I'm a little bit knockoff weak. So my next pick was to mitigate the dark... Uh, the dark weakness that I had on my team. Obviously, Weavile is a dark type and it resists, but Weavile doesn't want to take a hit ever. So, I needed a dark type to patch up. Uh, sorry, I needed a, uh, a type of Pokemon to patch up my dark weakness. So, I went for a Pokemon that a lot of people question, especially the commentators during the draft. And I can understand why, because it hasn't done extremely well in League Play, but I've seen what it can do. And it can menace your team and it can annoy the heck out of you this is going to be one of our walls for the season and this is koba the chestnut now you saw i named uh and i named the blade winner because it's made it to a couple of championship teams i've named uh chestnut koba because if you don't know what a koba berry is i'll just put it on screen for you guys here it reduces the damage of flying type attacks so i can run this thing koba berry but i can run this thing whatever way i want really uh, assault Vest, if I want to run, uh, not Focus Sash, that's not a very good set, but if I want to run Life Orb and make it on offensive with, with speed, if I want to, because uh, this thing has a very decent attack stat of 107. It's mostly a wall on my team, but I can run it offensive if I choose to and go full offense on any given week. So, uh, I named it Koba because it's kind of ironic uh, that it doesn't take flying moves <laughs> too well. It's a four times weakness. Pokemon with four times weaknesses are often regarded as not too great in draft league format. Uh, but Weavile uh, doesn't really fit into that category, having a four times weakness to fighting because it dies to anything, basically, because <laughs> it's so frail. But this Pokemon is more supposed to be tailored as a wall, but it does have a four times weakness. Now, I can run Koba Berry. And I have other answers for flying types, as you guys will see a little bit later. My next pick is actually a very good flying check. And this thing is mostly here to take physical hits. As you can see, a base 122 defense with 88 HP. This thing takes physical hits for days. And it covers a lot of the weaknesses that I already had, such as dark, like I mentioned before. Uh, ice, which was a little bit of a problem. Uh, with Latias, obviously I can switch an Entei, but I never want these two, uh, well, uh, Weavile, you guys can't see them, but they're at the top. I never want Weavile and Entei to take any damage if I don't need, if they don't have to, so, um, obviously Chestnut doesn't resist sights, so I don't know what I'm talking about, but <laughs> for other typings, I mean, they're not coming to mind right now, but this thing resists a lot of things. Uh, it has a lot of weaknesses, but it has a lot of resists as well, and it can take physical hits forever. I'm, I was also very ground weak at this point, Latias being my only thing off the ground, uh, and Mold Breaker Pokemon like Excadrill and Haxorus and Kiram Black could pretty much punch a hole through the first four uh, members on my team, so I needed something to uh, take those on, not so much Kiram Black, but the other two especially, Chestnut being a great ground switch in, especially for things like Landorus T and so on, so uh, that's what this thing's for. And also, this gives me the ability to spike stack. Uh, I have a spiker now, so I can set up hazards so that Weavile and uh, Entei can come in later on and use their priority moves to clean up games. That's what this thing is mainly here for. It's here to weaken walls. Uh, I'm sorry, weaken offensive Pokemon by using Spiky Shield, by using Leech Seed on switch-ins and Protect or, or Spiky Shield like I mentioned. Uh, and it also has a very good... Uh, array of moves if I want to run certain coverage as well on any given week. Again, we have Poison Jab here, we have Iron Head to be able to hit Fairy types, uh, we have uh, Giga Drain is just, uh, well, any grass move, obviously this thing's special attack isn't as good as its attack, you'd want to run like Wood Hammer or something like that, but it can also be run special and catch people off guard. 
Uh, it can run low kick, it can run drain punch, so it has a little bit of recovery. It's got synthesis, so it's my first Pokemon, uh, well, other than Latias, of course, with reliable recovery. Uh, so this thing just, I, th I think it's pretty good. And I'm, uh, it's also a taunter, which is really nice for uh, stopping Stealth Rocks early game. Uh, so it's uh, it's it's a pretty good Pokemon, I, I personally think, and I've had some experience with it. So I picked up a lot of Pokemon that I've already used uh, in the past and that I know how to use and that I'm not going to be uh, wondering how to use them during the season. So that's it for Chestnut. Our next Pokemon, as I said, I needed a flying check at this point because I couldn't have the Blade do everything on the team. And uh, that flying check is actually a really, really good Pokemon. Once again, I needed ground coverage, and I got it right here with Electros, nicknamed Coverage, because this thing gets pretty much every type of move you can imagine. And this is one of the only Pokemon with no weakness. I think it might actually be the only one now because of Fairy types in Gen 6. Uh, because of the ability Levitate, you can't hit it super effectively because the only thing it's weak to is ground. Which is why I also need Chestnut as a backup because of Mold Breaker Pokemon, which can actually hit this thing for super effective damage. But as you can see, this thing, uh, if I just scroll here, you'll see the typings that this thing gets. It gets Knock Off, Drain Punch, Giga Drain, Flamethrower. We've used this in lives before. It gets a lot of electric moves, including Volt Switch, uh, Wild Charge, which its physical attack is obviously a little bit better than its special attack, but it's good on both ends. I can run it fully offensive if I want to. I, I, I will mo more than likely run it Assault Vest on most weeks. It'll be a great special wall, as the Blade cannot take special hits too well. So this thing can just switch in on pretty much any special hit, eat it up, and then fire back with whatever coverage move I need to use at that time, if I'm predicting a switch or so on. So it also gets access to Toxic, U-Turn which is good because if my opponent has a ground type that I know is coming in I can also pack U-Turn instead of Volt Switch. Uh, this thing is great for taking on bulky waters as it has the electric coverage and the grass coverage. Uh, which is, a little, this? these moves, obviously Giga Drain and Grass Knot are way better than running Hidden Power Grass. They have higher base powers and Giga Drain gives you back health. So I can hit every single water type in the game including water ground types. I don't need to rely on my electric moves, so this thing is really, really good for handling those things, uh, especially that Chestnut doesn't really want to get burned, so it's not the best bulky water check. Um, Electros just takes up the role really well. It gets access to Charge Beam if it wants to increase its special attack. It gets Acid Spray, which is great for fairies, great for uh, forcing switches when Pokemon Special Defense go down by two. I love this move on this Pokemon. You can even run a physical set with Coil. It's got Crunch. The possibilities are endless with this thing, and that's what I really like. Uh, the only problem with my team up until now is that it's kind of slow, and I patched that up a little bit near the end. Not exactly how I wanted to, but I still got it done more or less. Uh, so obviously this thing is relatively slow. So I'll just uh, actually pause right here and I'll switch over to the next uh, team and you guys will see it right now. And this is the first Stealth Rocker that we picked up on the team, Seismitoad. Now I already had a Spiker in Chestnut, but I realized if I want to get off good damage on a lot of Pokemon, a lot of things are off the ground and a lot of Pokemon have quad weaknesses and times two weaknesses to rocks. I absolutely need a Stealth Rocker. And I decided to go with Seismitoad because Seismitoad is, is actually pretty reliable. It's another quad weakness on the team. It's our third one, but it's very, very easily mitigated by this, this thing's incredible defensive stats with a base HP of 105, base defense of 75, and base special defense of 75 as well, and a great speed of 74, actually. This thing outspeeds base 70s like Bisharp and Breloom and a bunch of other Pokemon like that Volcanion if I run enough speed on it. So it's definitely a great... Uh, another great water check that allows me to get up rocks relatively easily. Again, another Pokemon with amazing coverage. And what's great about having this uh, four times weakness to grass is that I can run a Rindo Berry at any time during the season and catch a, a grass type off guard and knock it out with something like Ice Punch or uh, Poison Jab, depending on what, what grass type we're talking about. I don't really ever want to stay in on a grass type, but nonetheless, this thing gets Sludge Wave, which is great for fairies as well, uh, Toxic, it's just, uh, it's another Pokemon with a lot of great coverage, and uh, I ran a couple of Calcs, Mega Manectric, which is actually a very big threat to my team, as you guys will see later on, um, 
with Hidden Power Grass, and if it packs Hidden Power Grass, it can't, ha it can't hit Latias at all, but a Mega Manectric with Hidden Power Grass, if I'm holding a Rindo Berry, and I'm max special defense, it does something like 28% to me. That is insane, that's no damage, and even, even if I'm running no special defense, only HP, and they are max speed modest, there's still a chance that they don't take me out. So this thing can actually take hits surprisingly well, even grass hits, so it's very, very bulky, it's very good, and like I said, I needed a good stealth rocker that can come in on Pokemon, threaten them out, and just get up rocks and get right back out of there. The only downside that this thing has is that it doesn't have very good uh, reliable recovery uh, outside of this. It doesn't get slack off right now. It doesn't get slack off. But uh, it might get Drain Punch if I'm not mistaken. Does it? Should have probably looked this up before I did this. But nonetheless, yeah, it does get Drain Punch. It's right up here. So it actually gets Earthquake, Earth Power. Its attack and its special attack are very, very close. Obviously, its attack being better. But normally, you want to run Scald on Seismitoad to get the burns and things like that. So. That's pretty much it. Now, I didn't want to put the job of stealth rocking all on Seismitoad, and I definitely needed another good all-around wall for the team. So I decided to go with a Pokemon that I only just recently started using. I've used its Mega Form before, but I never start—I never really used its uh, its non-Mega Form until a couple of weeks ago. And that Pokemon is Deancey, and we named it Booty because if you look at this thing's stats, its HP isn't all that, but its defense and its special defense are out of this world. Just look at what what happens when I go max defensive with a bold nature. It hits 438, and its HP can go up to 303. You're not hitting this thing. Like, Earthquake from Landorus T, I don't believe two hit KOs this if I run max uh, defensive. It's not enough. It's just, uh, it's a, an extremely bulky Pokemon, and it's another potential stealth rocker. But what I really like about Deancey is that it's another Pokemon that can set up and sweep if you don't prepare for it correctly. It gets Calm Mind. It gets Earth Power, Diamond Storm, Moon Blast. Uh, as you can see, the, the coverage here obviously gets the hidden powers. Uh, it can explode on you. I can run a Focus Sash Endeavor set, I believe. Uh, was that a thing on this thing? I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it is. I can run Focus Sash Endeavor if I choose to uh, on a slower Pokemon that would normally be able to, to Oko me. I can get up rocks. Hit, they hit me down to my Sash, and I go for Endeavor, and I leave them at 1%, and Entei or uh, Weavile can come in and kill them afterwards so very good Pokemon it also gets access to substitute rock polish which is really cool because its speed isn't amazing but if you invest enough into it like if you just take a look right here 180 is quite a bit of speed when you get up a rock polish uh, let's let's benchmark it actually at like 176 if you benchmark at 176 with 160 speed investment after a rock polish you're actually faster than Mega DNC. So this thing has more bulk than Mega Deancey, not as much power, but a lot more bulk and same speed. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. Uh, I just really like it, and it's not proven in the um, in the uh, draft format yet. Not and not anybody that I know personally has used this Pokemon effectively and gotten it to work in a defensive role. But if if you see right there, it also gets access to Heal Bell. Uh, does it get Wish? I don't think so. It shouldn't. I hope not, because then it's just way too good. Um, <laughs> not that I would mind, but uh, it gets Rest. Um, but in, the most important part is that it actually gets Heal Bell, which is really, really cool, because I don't have another Heal Bell on my team, as you guys will see. And if I need to get Status off, I need to do it as soon as possible. Like, let's say I, I need to get a Paralysis off of Weavile, or uh, a Toxic off of Latias to give it a little more survivability. I can do that with Deancey. If I need to get a Burn off of one of my physical Pokemon, like uh, like the Blade or uh, Chestnut, I can do that with Deancey. So, it's a really good all-around. I actually did not plan for this thing to have Heal Bell, and it just does, which is really, really cool. So, that's it for Deancey. It's a, it's a second Stealth Rocker. And my next pick is actually another Stealth Rocker. So I can switch it up between any of the three at any time. I can bring two of them if I choose to as well. But our next Pokemon here is Jacques the Armaldo. Jacques is a nickname from Finding Nemo. It's a shrimp. 
uh, and Armaldo supposedly is a shrimp Pokemon, so uh, this is the Pokemon that we chose to pick up. Now, with all these stealth rockers and having a spike setter with, uh, with Chestnut, I couldn't really rely on always defogging hazards away, so I needed a good spinner, but I wanted something that wasn't so, like Claydol or Sand Slash or one of those really lower tier Pokemon that doesn't really do anything. Armaldo isn't very good in normal competitive tiered play because of the fact that it's extremely slow uh, and in the tiers where it normally fits in, the top tier Pokemon can take it out. But in a form in a draft format, this thing can shine. Look at that attack stat. It's 125. This thing is a rock type. Rock stab is extremely undervalued. I already picked up a rock type in the Ancy. Now I've got two with um, with Armaldo. Rock spam is insane, especially when you pair it up with ground moves. That's pretty much universal coverage on most teams. And this thing has a base 125 attack, firing off stone edges. It also gets access to knock off, which is really cool and something that I wanted on a rapid spinner. This thing gets rid of hazards on my side, not my opponents, and you can't spin block me with almost anything because I can knock you off on the switch. So this thing is incredible. It also gets access to a really cool special move pool. If you guys see right there, Flash Cannon, I'm sure I'm going to catch somebody off guard with that in one of my games. Uh, if I can find the right opportunity, I'm going to try to do it, but this thing can even set up and sweep uh, with Swords Dance. Uh, it's just, it gets X Scissor as a stab move, which has... 100% uh, accuracy, which is really, really good. It's base 80, so this thing can hit really, really hard. I can rock polish with this as well, which is a great feat of, of rock type Pokemon is that they can increase their speed. Again, it's another Pokemon with not too great speed, but if I put it up to, uh, again, like let's say we give it max speed and we go 189. 189 times 2 is nearly, well, it's 11 less than, uh, than 400, right? So it goes to uh, 388, which is really, really good. That's that's insane. Like I can even like bring it down a little bit and just make it outspeed things like Tornadus if Tornadus is a problem for my opponent's team, uh, and I want to outspeed it and not get destroyed by a uh, a hurricane, let's say. So this thing is really good. I can also run it assault vest if I want to run some uh, coverage like Stone Edge, X Scissor. Uh, earthquake and rapid spin or knockoff and rapid spin uh, if my opponent doesn't have a ghost I don't need to run knockoff necessarily so this thing is really cool I like it and its ability is actually really good as well having battle armor now if we come back to seismitoad for a second these two have something in common which is really cool and that's that they have both have swift swim and that there is a rain team in our league so I can capitalize that by uh, on that by running Swift Swim on both of these Pokemon, and if I run enough speed on Armaldo, whew, this thing becomes a threat all of a sudden. So that's really cool. Most of the time, it's going to be running Battle Armor so that it doesn't get uh, critical hit. Uh, I can run its Sash to make sure I get up rocks on any given uh, on any given week as well. So just a really cool Pokemon overall. I'm really happy I have it, and I'm curious to see how I'm going to be able to perform with it because I've ne never actually used Armaldo competitively. So. Uh, I've seen it used, it's pretty decent, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, Battle Armor actually brings me into my next pick, and just before I show you guys what Pokemon I picked, this round was a mistake for me, and I was thinking, Aster, do not pick up your Mega just yet. You can wait, there are 8 Megas already picked, and yours is very unlikely to go. And I debated it, and I said to myself, if I make that mistake and somebody actually picks up the Mega that I've been going for this whole time, my entire team synergy is just gone right out the window and I won't be able to do anything with this team. Now what I was looking for, as you guys saw, I already have a Fairy Steel Dragon Core and I already have a Firewater Grass Core, but Seismitoad was not originally part of my Firewater Grass Core, it's not what I had intended. The Mega Pokemon that I decided to pick up, and you guys probably already can tell from the fact that I said Battle Armor, is Mega Slowbro. Mega Slowbro is not a very uh, experienced Pokemon in League Play, let's say. There aren't a lot of people that have tried it out. I know there's a team, it's actually Survive 9's team, last season that had this Pokemon, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. We named, nicknamed it Drasil because it looks like it spins like a Beyblade, it looks like a top, and uh, Drasil was the defensive Beyblade, uh, if you guys watched Beyblade, but 
Um, this is the Pokemon that I had intended to get from the very beginning. This thing is a, an amazing pivot. Obviously, in League format, it's not as amazing as it is in OU because of the fact that you have to Mega Evolve on the first turn. But that doesn't mean that I can't switch in Slowbro to take a hit and then switch it right back out as a pivot and get the Regenerator regardless. As you guys can see here, Regenerator from its non-Mega Evolved form. And what I really like about Slowbro is that if given the right opportunity, after a kill on my side, it's kind of like Weavile and Entei, but a lot more passive in the fact that if you let Slowbro get up one Calm Mind and you, you're not able to status it or anything like that, and that's another reason Deancey is actually really good, and uh, I'll just get to that in a second, but if you're not able to handle it right off the bat the second it starts Calm Minding, if this thing goes up even a little bit in its special defense, it becomes unbreakable because of battle ar of shell armor excuse me battle armor is the one where you can't get hit in either right yeah okay it's a, they do the same thing but this pokemon cannot be critical hit so the second i get up a calm mind i can slack off for days and if you can't status me i can sweep your entire team with the one of the slowest pokemon in the game which is absolutely ridiculous this thing runs a lot of the same way that uh, that Reuniclus does. It's a mega slot, but it, it's also a lot more, in my opinion, it's a lot more reliable than Reuniclus as a sweeper because Reuniclus can get crit at any second and your sweep just ends right there and then you have to change your whole game plan. You bring in Slowbro when you know that your opponent cannot stop the sweep. And I've done it in OU. If you look back at my very, very first video on the channel, it's, it's over a year, it's a year and a half ago that I posted that video, but I used Mega Slowbro in that live, and it just tore people to shreds. Like, I didn't even get to actually use it in the, like, Mega Evolve it in the live, but just without even Mega Evolving, it put in so much work already, and this thing, Mega Evolve, just does wonders for a team in terms of sweeping. So now I have three very, very good uh, Pokemon to bring in when something goes down, and take advantage of the situation. Now this thing may not seem like an amazing special attacker. Scald and uh, obviously Water and Psychic is cool and all, but it also gets access to moves like Flamethrower if I need it for, this, for the team. Focus Blast, uh, it gets uh, Signal Beam and Shadow Ball. It, it gets really, really good coverage, just enough for it to function and be able to knock out the majority of a team and all the while not being able to be crit which is phenomenal like if you don't have to worry about ever getting crit on a pokemon it's the safest feeling you can you can you can look at the roll and be like okay th this attack did 32 percent last turn there's a possibility it does 36 uh but no more than that and i'm at 39 i can take the hit and never risk a crit and slack off the damage and just get right back up to full and continue to calm mind until I can knock out the Pokemon that's in front of me. And then the momentum from that just allows me to knock out two or three Pokemon later. And then if Slowbro gets toxic or weakened, I can go into Latias later in the game and healing wish it back up. I can talk about this thing for days, but you guys will see it in action. It is absolutely phenomenal and I cannot wait to use it. So that's our round 10 pick. Now the reason I say that I should have waited for this pick was that I wanted Swellow and Swellow got taken from me. I wanted something that was off the ground that wasn't a Levitator so that I could handle Mold Breaker Pokemon. But then I realized and I looked at the situation and I said, I have a Mega Slowbro. Why am I worried about Pokemon like Excadrill or uh, or Haxorus, things like that? I was, I, I came to the conclusion that I have enough physical wall Pokemon that I can run on the team, including, um, well, it's not on this page, but uh, including Chestnut. I can, I can run uh, Latias physically defensive. I had enough checks to even Mold Breaker Earthquake users, ground users. So I didn't necessarily need a flying type per se. So I decided to go a different route. Now, as you guys saw with Seismitoad and with uh, Armaldo, they both have Swift Swim. And I thought it would be kind of cool to get a Pokemon that could also counter the other weather that is most commonly seen and the person that picked up the Sand Team. So I decided to pick up Stoutland. 
Now, I know what you're probably thinking, okay, well, Stoutland doesn't really do much, it's just a normal type. Well, you're wrong. This is another amazing revenge killer in the fact that it gets a move called Retaliate, which is absolutely destruction. Like, it's, it's destructive. It's base 70, doubles to base 140 if a Pokemon just got knock knocked out last turn. I can run this thing Scarfed, it's base 80. A Scarf base 80 has a tendency of outspeeding the majority of every team on on the face of uh on the face on the face of the spectrum and uh, other than things like i believe Mag mega alakazam and stuff like that like the highest highest uh speed tiers in the game so maybe like five percent of uh all the pokemon in the game but 284 is really really good and the other reason this thing is really good is because it gets intimidate uh, I didn't have an intimidator on my team, but now I have a sand rusher and an intimidator And if I want to run it scrappy as well I can if I want to hit ghosts and what's even better is that this thing is a normal type Which means that one its only weakness is fighting and two it doesn't get hit by ghost types Which my team was extremely weak to up until now between the blade Latias mega Slowbro. I had an insane ghost weakness and I needed to patch that up. That's why I wanted Swellow, but then I realized Swellow's not that bulky. I can't do too much with it. But Stoutland, I can run it Assault Vest. I can run it Choice Banded, Choice Scarfed. And again, the coverage that this thing gets between Crunch, Fire Fang, Retaliate, which we mentioned, uh, Iron Head again, Play Rough, which gives me a fairy move uh, other than the Ansi's Moon Blast. It gets Pursuit, which is phenomenal if I don't want to have to bring Weavile on a certain week. Uh, it gets Super Power, which is an amazing coverage move that Stoutland gets. Wild Charge, uh, it's just, I believe it gets every Elemental Fang, if I'm not mis uh, mistaken. Does it get Ice Fang? Uh, maybe it's just Fire Fang, and uh, I think that might be it, yeah. Well, no, there's Ice Fang, okay. So, yeah, so it gets every Elemental Fang. Uh, other than Thunder Fang, but it gets Wild Charge instead, which is really good. So this thing is another Pokemon on my team that has amazing coverage, and its stats are nothing to brush off. You can see here, uh, base 110 attack. Base 85 HP coupled with base 90 defense and base 90 special defense, which means, like I said, I can run this thing Assault Vest and it becomes a special wall. I can run it fully physically defensive with Intimidate, and then pretty much nothing breaks it barring a close combat. Uh, I can run a Choice Scarf to be able to outspeed my opponent's team. I can run a Choice Banded, which is more than likely what's going to happen on most weeks, to just punch holes with Retaliate and so on. Uh, which is really nice because the majority of the leads that I have, such as Diancy or Ormaldo, when they go down, I can bring in a Pokemon like this and just, just and just wreck shop. So this thing is really good, and I needed, I absolutely needed a Ghost immunity on my team. I could not go without a normal type. So I decided to go with Stoutland instead of Swellow, even though it was sniped from me in round 10. But I'm actually happy that it was because I would have ended up with an extremely frail Pokemon. Whereas now I have a very bulky dog named Mika. So that wraps it up for round 11. And finally, our round 12 pick and my buddy Jake is going to be very happy because I nicknamed this Pokemon after him. Uh, he might not be ecstatic, but he'll be happy that I named something after him. As you guys know, Jake from the Pokemon Sun and Moon discussion video, um, one of my closest friends, not Questy, and uh, I picked up this Pokemon at the very last round, and I decided, you know what, I just need something with an extremely strong fighting stab, because Chestnut's not going to cut it, and I know how great spamming close combat at the end of a game can be. I didn't end up going with Heracross because it shares the four times flying weakness with Chestnut. Obviously, I could have picked up something other than Chestnut, but I decided that it was my best pick at the time. So I needed a relatively good fighting type, strong, that could um, that could just spam close combat at any time. And I also wanted something that could U-turn and fast U-turn. As you guys saw, I already had a slow volt switcher slash U-turner in Electros. I wanted a fast uh, U-turner to be able to get into my Weavile, to get into my Entei at any given moment, or my Latias if I needed to Healing Wish something back up. And I also wanted something that could just close combat at the end of the game. And that Pokemon is Primeape. And Primeape is a fantastic Pokemon that gets a couple of really, really good abilities. Vital Spirit means that it cannot be put to sleep, which means I can switch it in on spores. I can also run safety goggles on things like that, uh, on other Pokemon. 
uh, to prevent them from going to sleep, but I have Primeape, which d never goes to sleep, so that's a really cool ability, ability. But the other really great ability is Defiant. Now, a lot of people have a tendency of leading with their Intimidate Pokemon, such as Crocodile or Landorus T, and this thing doesn't care. It just gets a an attack boost from it. As you guys can see, it's got very respectable 105 attack stat with an adamant nature goes to 305, which is still very, very good. Uh, it's got, oh wait, no, no, it goes a little bit higher than that because our IVs are, are zero. It goes to 339, which is very good. Uh, it's got base 95 speed, which this thing scarfed means that not even Mega Alakazam is faster than this thing. So I can spam close combat or U-turn or ice punch or anything that I choose to go for. Gunk shot, which means this thing is an amazing fairy killer. If I if I choose to not choice it, let's say, uh, I want to trick my opponent. So I don't want to give up, uh, give away too many things. But I can also run poison jab if I don't want to miss the gunk shot or if I've run calyx and gunk shot doesn't oko anyway. Uh, I can run seed bomb to be able to hit uh, four times grass weeks. Uh, so really really nice coverage on this thing as well And like I said, I needed something that could just spam close combat at the end of a game and just win kind of like Weavile spams knockoff or icicle crash or ice shard or Entei spams uh, e-speed I wanted a fighting type because I felt like I couldn't really hit rock types with either of the first two that I mentioned being Weavile and Entei Obviously I can run bull bulldoze or low kick or things like that But there are rock types that can take those hits and knock and knock me right out back uh, This thing however knocks out the majority majority of rock types in the game uh, Regardless of, of what you are with a close combat. So this thing is really really good I don't know why the IVs keep dropping to zero I think it's a new thing on showdown where if you don't have a physical move on your set It'll just drop them automatically, but as you can see they're even uninvested this thing gets a 309 attack and with the defiant boost It just goes to 450 and it becomes a ridiculously powerful uh, physical attacker so very good Pokemon I'm really happy with my draft overall. Let's just review it really quick. So we have uh we have Jake the Primeape, we have Mika the Stoutlin, Drasil our Mega Slowbro, Jacques our, our Maldo, Booty the DNC, Johnson. I named I, I didn't explain this thing's nickname actually. Before I get to the uh, rest of the recap, uh, we have uh, Johnson here. I nicknamed this thing uh, Johnson because it looks like that guy at your office that just is not having a good day and he's always hunched over a little bit. And the guy's name is always Johnson, so that's going to be our Seismitoad. Uh, and then we get back over here. I can now show you guys the entire team. So we have Weave, uh, Weasley, our Weavile, Gio Arente, Clara, the Latias, Winner, the Deblade, Akoba, the Chestnut, and finally Coverage, the Electros, as you guys couldn't see it because of my recording window, so I brought it up like that. But that's the team, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Uh, if you have any suggestions as far as sets... Uh, that you want to see used at some point. I'm going to try to utilize as much as I can. Uh, sunny Day, um, Sunny Day Entei is definitely on my mind, but again, I don't want to give up, uh, give away too much information. Um, <laughs> if you guys want to see any sets whatsoever, leave me a, a comment in the comments down below, of course. Uh, if you want to check out my Twitter, I actually posted all of my picks uh, with pictures. Uh, to my Twitter account as the draft was going on, except at the very end because uh, stuff happened and stuff like that. But uh, if you want to hit me up on Twitter, you can also check that out in the description. Uh, if you want to hit that like button, please do if you enjoyed. Uh, hit subscribe if you want to see more, if you want to see the battles from the UPA this season or any other content that I put out. And again, guys, thank you so much for watching, uh, watching, <laughs> not washing, uh, watching. I appreciate all your support. Thank you so much and have a good one. Ciao.